What is up everybody? Today we are going to be doing this very cool little example fully equipped with a bunch of stuff. We got the Greensock animation platform, SVG, text path, and much more. Hey y'all, Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna be taking a look at kind of just a simple UI experience. There's a bunch of stuff mixed in, so there isn't one particular point to this tutorial, just to show you how you can go do some cool stuff with CSS, SVG, JavaScript, and more. So just to show you again, the uh, idea here. So what's happening here is this is a rotating with CSS, um, SVG path-based um, text placement or type placement, I guess you could say. Um, I'm gonna show you a tutorial where I got this information from for how to achieve this because it's not as straightforward as you would think. Um, and then also we can see we kind of have like a this smooth mouse follow sort of thing. So you'll see this in some websites and um, especially like those cool sort of portfolios. Uh, I see this a lot on, on different types of designer based portfolios. So you can basically make anything follow. And this is just, I'm just gonna show you how to do this. Um, with the combination of JavaScript and CSS transitions. Um, and then finally, we'll use GSAP just to create, you know, a very simple timeline based animation that does this. All right. So I, the inspiration where I got this from was uh, SVG circle, where we are, there we are, is right here. Um, they released this here um, a couple weeks ago at COD drops here. So if you view the demo, they show you some really cool stuff um, that you can do based on animation and the circle uh, based uh, SVG paths. Very cool stuff that you can do. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, just wait one second. You're about to watch me use some really cool front-end development techniques, but if you're not great at front-end development, then you should definitely take the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. They recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content, there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges, and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So check out the first link in the description below to get 50% off. All right, so as mentioned uh, at the beginning, um, this article right here, it does mention right down here, there's an article um, that explains how to make these circle-based um, paths for text, and if you click on it, it's gonna give you a lot of information. It's not as straightforward as just like opening Photoshop or I mean, I mean Illustrator or any other vector app and just creating a circle and then just using that as a path. It can't be a closed path. So um, you actually have to create two different uh, arcs that compose of the path, if that at all makes sense. And this is the code right here that we're gonna use as the basis because it already has the correct path and the D attribute here for making it work. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna copy it, and I have Visual Studio Code open with an index.html, quick boilerplate, we just have our link to CSS, main to CSS, and I'm just, I'm not using SAS or anything, there's not enough uh, rule sets to justify it, and there we go. So um, if I paste that in real quickly and just save and right click and open with live server, you have to have the live server plugin for Visual Studio Code. Here we go, this is what we have. All right, so that's what we have to work with and let's go ahead and just get started um, cleaning this up a bit. First of all, we're going to remove the whole style here. We're not gonna do inline style, we'll do that in the um, main.css. So now if we save this, of course, looks like, you know, Times New Roman, <laughs> horrible. All right, so the, the next thing we're gonna change is the fill. So for our fill, we're just going to leave that, uh, I believe we're just gonna leave that off. I'm looking at my reference code, I gotta find mine. Yeah, we're just gonna leave fill to none. All right, so that should give us a completely white background. All right, and for now that's pretty good. I do wanna change the actual type though. We're gonna change view the experience. Now if you're wondering why I'm doing all caps and not just doing text transform, uppercase and CSS, uh, it doesn't work on the text property. Uh, so I'm just all caps locking that, and this is what we get, view the experience. Okay, maybe I wanna put a space after. I'm not sure if it will render the space, it probably will. 
looking at that period. No, it doesn't look like it does. Well, no big deal. Anyhow, main.css. So up here, we're just gonna start with the body tag as always. Um, we're just gonna do a background. I'm gonna be going like with a blue color. Uh, but instead of blue, I'm gonna get into that color picker. And you know, I used something that was like a little bit more up in this area. Um, my actual exact one was just 079248. All right, we got that. We're gonna do a font family. The one I've been using for the past year or so, Poppins. I have that installed locally. You wanna import that, of course, if, you, if this is a real project. Margin zero, height. 100 viewport height, display grid, uh, place items, center, and overflow hidden. Now the reason I'm just doing overflow hidden, I know there's not a much, I'm not gonna be having any scrolling here, and when you move that element around uh, the SVG circle based on the mouse position, it can create horizontal and vertical scroll bars. Um, so that's what we have so far. Now, one thing I, I wanna do is also add a button. Um, just so we can add, oh, just in a demo of interactivity. So we're gonna have a button, and we're gonna say view the experience. All right, save that. All right, and now first what we wanna do is take that SVG element. We're just going to put a width, 100 pixels. Should probably just use RAM units for that, or RAM units position, absolute. Um, so now that we've made it absolute, our button should be centered. There we go. All right. And we're gonna do, let's see here, our text. Let's get our text working. So our text is the text attribute within the SVG right here. All right. So we'll go ahead and put font size for M units. Font family is going to be Poppins. Our font weight will be bold, and our fill is just gonna be a light blue color. So 138, 175. I didn't want it to be pure white because it just kind of contrasts too much, might be a little bit too distracting. And there we can see it right up there in the upper left corner. All right, uh, so far so good. Let's see here. Let's just take the button. Um, for the button, I'm just gonna paste all these in because you're not here just to, to learn how to style a button. There is nothing exciting happening with this button, except I'm just changing it to, to this property right here. So cursor pointer, all that good stuff. All right, so now that we have that, I one thing I do, well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, at this point, now we can start with the JavaScript. So we're just gonna do script down here, and control B, make sure that I am not hiding any of the code. I am slightly, maybe we'll leave that We'll leave that up, just kind of push it over. There we go. All right, so for the first thing we want to do, we want to define some variables just to access our DOM elements. So const circle SVG is going to equal document dot query selector, and that will be um, our SVG element. And fairly certain I'm doing something wrong here because why is it looking like that script const Oh, that's why I hate myself. I was doing it inside of the SVG element. I was like, what is happening? Okay, we should, uh, there we go. Now let's also get our button and that's gonna be document.query selector once again. All right. Okay, so for the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna make our graphic, our SVG little graphic, um, we wanna make it follow, or you know what? Yeah, we wanna make it follow the mouse position. Before we get to that, let's make it rotate first. And of course, it's just a simple CSS-based animation. So we're gonna take our, uh, let's see here, SVG element, and we're gonna put in um, an animation, we're gonna call it rotation, infinite, and linear. All right, now I'm just gonna copy and paste the keyframe section, our animation, because it's so simple. So. We're creating an animation called rotation from zero degrees to 359 degrees for the rotation. So now we'll save it and we get it rotating. So of course you can increase the time from three seconds to five seconds or make it shorter, depending on how fast or slow you want it to rotate. This is kind of fast, honestly. Maybe we should bump that to like 4.5. All right, 
There we go, that's better in my opinion. Okay, so now we want to make it follow the mouse and there's several different ways to do this. So the first thing we'll, we'll try doing, um, so we need to add an event listener on window and we need to listen for the mouse move. And then we're gonna pass it as an event. And inside of here, we could just console log the event dot client x for example. And you'll see when we do that, there we go. So this is the x, so this is zero, all the way over here, all the way y over there. All right, so we know that's working. What we can do is we can take our circle SVG, because that's a thing we wanna move, and we wanna do style.top. Now we could do top, which is the CSS position top, because we made it absolute. All right, so what we can do is equals event.client y. Now let's do this for the bottom, or the left rather, and this will be client x. Now let's see what happens. So it's very, there's no, it's not smooth, and, it, and the, the, cur the pointer, or the cursor is not in the center. So let's fix that center issue first. So basically we just wanna offset that, and we could just do minus 45, and minus 45, and that's pixels, by the way, by default. So now it's in the center, and how did I know 45? Because I experimented with it before. So I, you'll just have to experiment with these types of values, obviously. Now one thing, if we hover over the button, we don't see a pointer. That's because this SVG right here, even though it looks like it's transparent in the middle, there's still an SVG square element there. So we could do in here on our SVG, it's gonna be uh, pointer events none. All right, so we save that, we go back, and now you can see it changes to a pointer. So now we have the ability to click that button or access anything that's behind it. Um, so now uh, we could see that, oh, by the way, I wanted to mention something. Um, by default, these are pixel values, so it, it, it'll append a PX value at the end. If for some reason you wanted to use a different unit, like a CSS unit, um, like a rem or an M or something, you could still do that. Um, so what you could do, let's comment this out. I mean, this is 100% necessary because if you scale this up, and move it around, it still, it still works. But I figured I would show this anyhow. Um, what we can do is we can say, um, let's do circle SVG dot style dot top equals, um, we're gonna say event dot client Y. All right, so top of course is gonna be based on the Y axis. We're gonna divide that by the browser um, default font size value. Um, I believe you can get that dynamically, but we're just gonna put in 16 pixels because we know that's what it is. Um, and then we can take our offset, which is, we could subtract the offset, which is 45 pixels. Remember, that's how we had to move it and divide that by 16 as well. And then put at the end, stop that, there we go, plus rem for instance. Do the same thing I on left and X and this will still work. So even when you scale it up, it's gonna stay. All right, so now I, let's reset that to 100. All right, so now we want a nice smooth gradual follow. All right, so how can we do that exactly? Well, we could come up here to our CSS and put a transition on the actual text element or SVG element. So we could come here, we could put transition, no, not, not scream case. Transition, um, we're gonna put top for one second and left for one second. Ooh, what am I doing here? There we go. Save that. And it looks weird and janky kinda, right? So we could change the easings. So transition timing function we could say ease hyphen out. All right, so let's save that. 
There we go. Very cool. So another thing to consider is, so we have this working pretty much. We're doing it on mouse move. What if I we wanted to add it on request animation frame? Um, and if you don't know what that is, basically the browser will refresh extremely fast. And this is something that happens and we can tie into that. Um, and we could do other things along with it, which I'll show you uh, an example. So what we can do is we can create, um, let's see here, a new function and we'll call it mouse move. So const mouse move, all right. And we could say, uh, if we wanted to move it here within our request animation frame, which you'll see in a second, let's change this just to a mouse Y and a mouse X. And we have to define those now up here outside of our function. So we'll just do it right here. Mouse X equals zero. Mouse Y will equal zero. All right, so now what we could say, mouse I Y. Oh, wrong one, I'm looking at the wrong area. We could say circle.svg.style.top equals mouse Y. And this is a necessary, we already had it working before. But I'm gonna show you something else um, which makes it cool. I, and you'll see in a second. So what we can do is now we can run this function with request animation frame and just call mouse move. And then at the bottom we'll call mouse move here as well. Now, of course, this is, this is still gonna work just like it did before. Ah, no, it's not, one second. Uh, circle style up, oh, that's, there we go. I forgot to change that as well. All right, so it's gonna work this, the, just the same as it did before. But what we can do, let's say for instance, we wanted, let me go back, um, this to animate in some other fashion. Um, like maybe we wanted to, the opacity pulse in and out for some reason on that little circle graphic. Um, so what we can do is we can define um, like a, a another, uh, in an integer that by default is set at one. So we'll just say let interval equals zero. And then we're going to say interval plus equals one. All right, so we're gonna increment it by one. And if we can console log this by the way, just to show you. Uh, let's come here. You'll see it's going really fast, all right. Um, get rid of that. And then we can do something like this. We could say circle svg.style.opacity equals I. Uh, so remember this value is going up very quickly. So we have to work with it. We can't just put interval right here. That won't work. So what we can do is we could put math.sin or sign and we could put interval and multiply it by something very small. All right, um, if we save this, you're seeing that it is kind of coming in and out, kind of like what we want, but the problem is, if we console log now, this, let's console log just this, by the way. You will see that it's going from, to, to and from a, a negative value. And of course, negative on opacity doesn't make sense. So what we could do, we could put, there's probably other ways of dealing with this. One plus. And now it's it's working a little bit better of a pulse that maybe it might be something you want, but it's just, you know, this is just a quick demonstration to show what you can do and the cool stuff you can do um, if you understand trigonometry and math, I don't really. I do understand what's happening if we use dot sin or dot uh, cos. Um, it's just a wave function. So it, it just takes your values and it goes up and down. Um, so that's just one thing to show you, uh, one possible thing. Me personally, I think it's a little bit much with the animation. So we're just going to console log of those things out. So we get back to our regular situation. 
Now, let's say for instance, uh, we want something to happen when you know the button's clicked. You know, this little circular animation does something, and the rest of the page does something. This is a good use case for um, GSAP. So what we can do is we can get the GSAP CDN link. If you just go to Google and type GSAP3 CDN, you'll get it. Um, it's also in the code pen for this uh, tutorial. So just go ahead, uh, paste it. That's all right here. And we can create a timeline real quickly. So let's come down here. We'll do it at the very, very bottom. For our timeline equals GSAP timeline. Um, defaults will be just ease, power. And if you don't know what GSAP is, the Green Sock Animation Platform, I have a bunch of tutorials and crash courses on it. So definitely do a channel search for that. So we're gonna go timeline two when this button's clicked. We're gonna take our circle SVG first and we're just gonna maybe scale it out and you won't see it anymore. So we, we'll just take our width and just go to zero. Uh, and then the opacity will be zero as well. Then we'll take um, our body because we're gonna get the body back. We're gonna change the body background color and also the button. And we're gonna take both of the, those. So think of this as kind of like a, a CSS selector having the body and button. And then we're gonna change both of the properties of background to white. By default, we wanna pause this because if you don't pause it and you save it, it's gonna take, take everything and make it white just like that. But So we wanna pause. Ah, there we go. And then our button, which we created, you know, we referenced up here, add event listener, click. And inside of here, timeline play. All right, so now we come down here, we're going to view the experience. And there we go. Very, very fun stuff. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe, hit the like, leave a comment, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.